I'm gonna teach you guys four handheld techniques specifically used for shooting cinematic gym videos. Tip number one, handheld slider motions. So here we're gonna to wanna to shift your weight from one leg to another. Think of your upper body being fused to your hips. Wherever your legs shift, your upper body shifts with it. Hip thrusts are great when filming the athlete from the front and at their eye level. As you can see, when Christy is at the top of the movement, I use her lower body as basically my foreground. In this exercise, we have a kneeling kettlebell one arm overhead press, and I'm using the kettlebells as my foreground because Christy is pressing a kettlebell in the video. Now you can achieve this shot one of two ways. You can either slowly push in with the camera and push out using the kettlebells or weights as your foreground, or you can simply just sit nice and still and keyframe in and keyframe out to eliminate any sort of handheld micro jitters. In this exercise, I'm doing a slow side to side movement as well as a push in movement when Christy gets to the top of the exercise and tracking her upper body and face when she gets to the top of the movement. Last but not least, when Christy is doing these shoulder touches, I'm getting multiple angles of this, not just one angle. This is very important. When I'm filming athletes at the gym, I always tell them that when we pick an exercise, I want them to do three sets of 10 reps. Now, the reason for this is simply because in the first set, I can just dial in a specific camera angle and look. On the second set, I can shift my angle to a completely different angle. And on the third set, I always like to go for the more raw, up close, tight, personal and emotional shots. Typically, it'll take an athlete about 30 seconds to complete a full exercise and rep out 10 reps. So this should give you more than enough time to get your shots from that specific camera angle. Tip number two, handheld tracking shots. The trick to these is to track the weight that the athlete is lifting. Now I see this a lot when amateur videographers try to pull this off. They actually use their wrists to bob the camera up and down like this, rather than using their whole body to bob the camera up and down, which you're gonna see in the footage right now. Here we have deadlifts. And as you can see, I'm moving my entire upper body up and down and trying my best to keep the barbell in the center of the frame. When I feel like I have a really good shot and I find a really nice composition, I will hold that composition for the remainder of the athlete's reps during the exercise, as you can see here. Using the plates on the barbell as my foreground, but the movement of Christy doing the deadlift, the plates eventually become my foreground when they enter the frame during the exercise. I'm gonna mention this one more time because I think it's that important, but when I did shoot Christy doing these deadlifts, I captured like three or four different camera angles of her actually executing on the deadlift. And the reason for this is simply just so I have more footage to play around with when I go to edit the video. Now at this point, I feel I have all the angles and footage necessary for my chosen camera angles. So I start to actually freestyle a little bit, which is actually a main movement I wanna to touch on in tip number three. Lastly, we have this kettlebell squat variation. And as you can see, I'm simply tracking Christy from the top of the squat to the bottom. And when she pushes the kettlebell out in front of her, I track the kettlebell out and back in, then rinse and repeat this until I 100% have the shot I was looking for. Tip number three, what I like to call it is handheld freestyling. When I freestyle shoot athletes at the gym, I like to stick to handheld tracking shots with more stepping movements. I highly recommend filming these fast paced fitness shots at 4K, 24 FPS, at one over 50 shutter speed. Now your shutter speed is gonna be everything when filming these tracking shots or any exercise that has a lot of movement in it. So you can kind of play around with your shutter speed. So when filming in 24 FPS at one over 50, that's gonna give you a really natural motion blur that is very similar to what the human eye sees. Now, if you wanna manipulate things a little bit, I highly recommend that you try bumping your shutter speed to one over 200 and one over 400. What this is gonna do is actually eliminate motion blur from your image making the fast paced shots look a little more action type. Now with handheld freestyling, I almost actively search for good composition while the athlete is actually doing an exercise. And this is a little unorthodox. It's completely always off script. But a lot of the times when I do this, I end up pulling like the best clips out of the entire shoot from doing the freestyle shots. So it's just something to be a little more creative and fun with whether the shots turn out like crap or you end up using them because they're absolute bangers is totally up to you. It's still worth doing because not only, like I said, you could get a banger of a clip out of it, but it also just gets you more comfortable with getting the weird shaky handheld effect. Tip number four, handheld camera rotation. The most important part of this movement is anchoring your feet down and be in a position that you won't feel unbalanced. In this clip, I literally get down on one knee to make sure I'm comfortable to pull this movement off. 
As you can see, I'm literally twisting my body and cradling the camera back and forth. When you properly set your body up for the shot, you will get an extremely consistent result to choose from in post. Personally, I think this should be a staple shot for all fitness videos, especially the really hype cinematic ones in the gym, just because it's such a unique shot and every single athlete I've shot for always points out this type of camera movement when they do check out the first draft of the edit. Now, because I've done this movement so many times, I'm very comfortable doing it. So once you do get comfortable with this movement, you can do it while moving around. Here, I'm literally adjusting my camera's position as I'm cradling the camera back and forth. Again, this takes time to get used to and good at. Lastly, if you have never executed this camera movement before and you just don't feel quite confident doing it on a set yet, I suggest that next time you're on set, locking your body off and just focusing on the cradling movement on a stationary exercise like this one. And this is a perfect place to start when getting used to this handheld camera rotation. All right, so I got a bonus shot for you and I wanted to include this as a bonus because this is something I see so many people miss the mark on. I'm mostly talking to the amateur fitness videographers that may not have a lot of videography experience or creative direction on set. This type of shot, in my opinion, instantly separates the amateur videographers from the professional videographers. Hero shots are basically putting your subject in the spotlight. This is more of a dramatic cinematography look, but nine out of 10 fitness video edits are very upbeat and dramatic, so hero shots always fit into fitness cinematics perfectly. Here's a few hero shot poses that you can actually pause the video, screenshot the still, and you can straight up copy these for your next gym video shoot. 